Good. <laughs> Welcome, Arnold Kaufman, to Raw and Cook Vegan. Right. Uh, I wonder if you could tell us just a little bit, Arnold, about the way you were raised and um, if your family had any knowledge of nutrition or diet or fitness. Uh, perfectly honest, I raised myself. You raised, okay. okay. I mean, my father wasn't around, my mother wasn't around, and I was raised, um, I was raised in a ghetto. <laughs> okay. So I learned, um, I appreciate every moment, every moment, which means I was raised poor, uh, I mean, we had food, but I, I didn't, I never, never, with clothes was a problem. I used to wear hand-me-down clothes. All right. And, and food was what, never, good. I see whatever food, I want to eat. Didn't what know kind anything of food about was anything. it? What? What kind of food did you eat? Well, my mother left me uh, steaks. I used to have steaks, steaks every night for, for dinner. I used to follow with ice cream. I had vanilla <laughs> fudge ice cream. All right. Lunch, uh, I don't remember. Probably ate breakfast eggs. But I'll tell you what I do remember. I used to eat steaks every single day. Every single day I had a steak sandwich. Every single day I had ice cream. Every single day. At age 17 years old, I developed two cysts in my breast. Huh. And one of, them, one of them got removed. And the other one, they didn't do anything about it. They said it wasn't cancerous. Okay. So right. that was... But the thing is, I was oblivious. All right. At, at what age did you become interested in diet and nutrition? I would say at age uh, 51. 51, all right. 51 and years old. What happened was I read a book by uh, T.C. Fry. Yeah. At the time, it's, I did own a health food store. Since I read the book by T.C. Fry, I, it made perfect sense. I had a, I had a, I had a vegetarian cafe at the time. I closed it down. No longer wanted to sell good conscience. And I figure I will figure out a way to make it a raw cafe. Wow. Um, how many years did you have the vitamin store before you changed? Well, I had a 51, six years. Six years, okay. Vitamins was 85% of my business. Okay. So. And then, did you, can you characterize for me your health um, prior to getting interested in, in nutrition and prior to getting the vitamin store? How was your health with all these steaks and ice cream? Was your health good or bad or what? Um, all right, age 45 years old, I thought I had a heart attack. Yeah. And uh, I was lying in bed, well, in the hospital bed. <laughs> my daughter was holding one hand, my wife was holding the other hand. Okay. I said, what the heck am I doing wrong? I then occurred, it occurred to me diet, but only in a sense of um, sardines. Huh. <laughs> Sardines. See, I should be eating sardines. <laughs> and the other side, I wasn't exercising. And I found out about rebounding. Okay. Okay, cool. So uh, I remember playing basketball for like, you know, like twice down at full court, and I was knocked out. Wow, okay. So I wasn't in really good shape. All right. Not like I am today. <laughs> right, right. And then how long would you say it took you to transition, like, Initially, did you become vegetarian or did you become vegan? What happened? Well, I went from a meat eater to uh, a raw vegan. Raw, okay. And it, took, it was a gradual process. And at that time, when I started in 2000, no, 1998, there was no one around. I mean, literally no one around. And, um, uh, no I remember one doing, No one around doing raw food? No one doing around raw food. Yeah. Uh, I got hold of Paul Neeson, I got hold of, and Lauren Lockman. Those yeah. are the two people I remember. Paul Neeson came and gave lecture <laughs> my store, and Lauren Lockman came and I gave him a lecture. So, okay. Actually, Paul's a good thing, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. Paul's a good thing. Well, I, I like Lauren and I like Paul too. I, I think they're both, they're both yeah. teaching good things. Yeah. Um, did you, um, you, you mentioned reading the book by T.C. Fry. Did you right. ever have him come and speak at your store? No, but I didn't. It's funny. I didn't meet T.C. Fry about two months before he died. Wow. And I, gave, I saw him gave him a lecture up in New Jersey. I looked at a man. I said, man, this guy's sick. Uh, I, could, I could see it because he had, he had like a grayish color about him. And um, his whole lifestyle was really bad because he lived in a garage. He left his wife. Uh from my understanding, he did oxygen therapy in Costa Rica, and I think that nailed him. Plus, he had a whole bunch of different lifestyles, really. 
It's not about the food. It's about the lifestyle. Yeah. You got to eat raw food, do everything right, but you're not in the right lifestyle. It's not going to work. Yeah. 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 I think he overworked himself. And yeah. Right. Plus, he took on, he took on a lot. I heard, yeah. I heard the government try to kill, kill a son or something like that from what and rumors around. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember, but uh, he took on a lot and he overextended himself. He went to a lot of different marriages. He knew his stuff, but it had to be everything included. Yeah, I actually saw him in uh, Austin, and right. I uh, I attended one of his seminars down there, and uh, he was he was great at that time, and um, he he was amazing. I mean, all the work he put into that, trying to to raise consciousness. Right, he did a lot of work. So, a lot. Um, was he the first uh, natural hygienist you came in contact with? Um. Yes and. Yes, because at the same time, I already had him. I met Anna Inez. Okay. He took care of, he took care of T.C. Fry. Because you, um, now, were you in Pennsylvania at that time? Yes, I'm always, I'm a Philly boy. Okay, okay, gotcha. Philly All boy. Because right. I remember they had a, uh, are you familiar with the Pauling Health Manor in New York? No. Okay. That was kind of a run by a natural hygienist, and they did fasting and, and raw food right. diets there. Right. But um, okay, so so you read this book by T.C. Fry. You decided to sh to switch to raw food diet, and can you talk with that immediately. 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 So, so immediately, you you recognize the truth of it. Right. Yeah. And can you describe what happened in your body as you made that transition? Perfectly honest. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Because what I did, I, I did it, I did it very gradually. I mean, I knew it, but, you know, at the time I was married and uh, I got four kids. I got 10 grandchildren. I still had four kids. So the social aspect was, I went along with it. Gotcha. gotcha. Didn't, I didn't have any support. Yeah. I wasn't so strong enough. So were you kind of doing the raw thing yourself and then your the rest of your family was not interested? That's right. Okay. To this day. Yep. Wow. And wow. Uh, I'm not married anymore, but uh, okay. I got four kids. I mean, they're interested, somewhat interested. But from, yeah. my, from my experience, I don't depend on anybody. I depend yeah. on myself. I mean, once you start depending on other people, in my opinion, you're screwed. Because <laughs> you always guys you look for other people to help you out. Doesn't work that way. You have to help yourself. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you got to really be stand strong. Yeah. So, so what happened when you, when you, when you transitioned your vitamin store into what it is now? Um, was that was that um, financially disabling? I mean, you had this ongoing business concern. That right. I went. To, uh, my business was eighty percent. of My business was vitamins. I have to say, I was like twenty thousand a month or something like that. Of which fifteen thousand came from vitamins. One day I said, I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> Went down to like 10. I said, oh my gosh, I better do something real fast. Wow. And then I'm looking for foods to incorporate. Okay. So you so you became more like a grocery store, like a like a health food grocery store? I opened up a cafe, a raw cafe. Okay. And, uh, and that became like, uh, then I tr began selling things out of there. All right. When you first became raw, were you eating a lot of fruit? Were you eating a lot of vegetables? What was your diet like? I first became raw. What happened was I had a, um, I don't remember, whipped smoothies. I also was big into, into dry food. In fact, it killed my teeth. What happened was I, I, discovered, I, mean, I discovered bananas and dates together with lemon juice. You put it to, if you put it in a dehydrator, it becomes a bar. Huh. So I began selling my own bars, and I began selling bars nationwide. But the thing is, I was eating them all day long, and my it did a number to my teeth. Okay. But I didn't think in those terms. I just think of just whatever. I yeah. mean, right now, I'm more conscious of where. Keep in mind, I didn't read any books. I read T.C. Fry book. It wasn't like a... Uh, it was there. It wasn't like a conscious effort to be to be natural hygienist. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense or not. I just did it, but not aware. I, okay, I did okay. the best I could, but I wasn't conscious. Like right now, it's like today, um, 
I stopped eating today at 4.30, and I won't eat again until maybe 9.30, 10 o'clock tomorrow. That's 17 and a half hours I'm not eating. So okay, okay. at least four or five days a week I do that. And today my food intake was basically nothing. Maybe a few bananas, maybe a smoothie, and that's it. Maybe so, not uh, avocado. Would you say, what would you say is an average caloric intake for you per day? I would say now 1,500 2,000. Yeah, yeah. And, and you feel completely satisfied on that? You have plenty of energy? Yeah, my energy rocks. I mean, I, I'm up in the morning at 637, exercise an hour and a half, two hours, go to work nine, 10 hours and come back. And uh, I chill for a while. I watch, I generally I watch a movie like nine o'clock, but up until nine o'clock, I'm working. Okay. Right now I'm working on my uh, autism. Wow. Which means I just finished an article on autism. Um, did a couple, couple, couple uh, videos. I just got permission from a mother. I don't know if it's going to hold true or not, but I told her I would support her son if she became a raw vegan. And the, her diet was some called ketogenic. It was all fat, 95% fat. What kid was getting tons of seizures. I said, no problem. I will feed you. I've been telling her like for three weeks. Finally, yes, she says, you can do it. You can film my son. But I'm not sure of the, the repercussions, though. <laughs> so <laughs> have, you, have you started that program with the boy? Not yet. Okay. I'm talking to mother every day, though. Okay. And I just well, wrote an article this, yesterday. This is one of the things I'm so curious to hear from you is yeah. you've been doing this for many years now. And, right. and I, I think you've seen a lot of people recover from various diseases. And I right. wonder if you could, could you share with us just some of the variety of diseases that you see cured by eating this way? Uh, brain cancer is the biggest one that comes to my mind. Yeah. Girl came to me at 13 years old, Megan Shrove. She talked for me about an hour and a half. And, uh, you know, to me, talk's cheap. You know what I mean? Someone says, yeah, yeah, yeah. To do it, to do it every day is another thing. But she became, a, she became a raw foodist. And then about six months later, she came back again. She wasn't getting the results, and she came a fruitarian. And now she's a very strict fruitarian. That's the biggest one. Another guy called Tim Lewis, he had something called um, IHP, which is a low plate, plate account. He came to me. Uh, it was like six, he was like six foot two. Actually, he's a baseball player too. He wow. said struck out 20, 20, 20 ball players in one game. Wow! <laughs> he knew Whitey Ford. <laughs> wow! Anyway, he came to me. He are, he came to learn know more about raw food. He argued with me for about a year. Finally, it was one day he diagnosed. He said he had all these bruises in his body that wasn't going away. And the doctor told me, you know, he had he was almost like a hemophiliac. He says, Arnold, what should I do? He says, you're going to go raw. <laughs> yep. So I went a raw vegan, and he actually went on water fast. His blood count went from 20 count to, to 60 count, to now he's pretty much normal. Wow. Uh, I don't know. Let's see, breast cancer. Give me the disease, I'll give you a person. <laughs> uh, <laughs> breast cancer. Heart, heart disease, heart disease. Heart oh, disease wow. actually was with me because I was diagnosed with it. Yeah. Uh, what it is, it's saturated fat. Once I cut out the fat, the body will go to the, all your arteries and cleanse it out. Uh, diabetes. I, what I do is I have a 30-day program. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing this now for 15, 16 months. I, every month, I take I'm anywhere from 25, 35 people, and I feed them for $3 a day. That's amazing. That's amazing. $3 a day. They come, in, they come in the store every day and get a meal, a smoothie. And once a week, I give classes. And I kind of support their being like last month, two months ago, we had a guy with diabetes. Uh, he fought me tooth and nail for like seven years. And finally he says, Arnold, I'm ready. Because he <laughs> couldn't walk on his feet. Wow. Now, couldn't walk on his feet. That means his feet were, were going to go. So anyway, he started listening to me. And uh, within, I guess, two, three weeks, completely went, his pain completely went away. Uh, nice. Two people, two guys with Lyme disease. And actually, wow. I just wrote a book called uh, 21... Um, he owns success stories. I should yeah. get my book out. <laughs> I, 21 people who actually gave their story. I had one guy who had a, it was a Lyme disease called Dave, Dave Carone. He's on yeah. one of my YouTube videos. Lyme disease for 19 years. He had antibiotics in bed. Did my 30 day program by a second week. Completely better. Wow. Completely better. Wow. He lost like 22 pounds, became a raw fruitarian vegan. 
He, he still, still to this day, thirteen months later, he still does it. Not one hundred percent, but when you do my see the problems I have, a lot of times several several ways of doing it. What I do, I see I have trouble coughing. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching your body movement. <laughs> you really have trouble. <laughs> we it's have okay. Chest, it's okay. Just anyway, this guy came to me. What it is, I they pay me ninety nine dollars. At the end of the month, they get their money back in store credit. This way, they have to stick to the program. From what I ask me is those people who get their money back will stick to the program as far as attending classes. Everybody so, go, everybody go, comes every day, but. That's so cool. What do they got to lose? What do they got to lose? Well, that's what they have to lose. And, I, and believe it or not, I make money out of the whole deal. That's awesome. That's awesome. I make money <laughs> by giving free food away. <laughs> so tell it's me. genius just, operation. That's incredible. That's incredible. So when you when you do your thirty day challenge and yeah. they pay three bucks per day, is that is that three bucks for three meals or one three meal? Bucks, three bucks for one, one meal. One. It's every single day. It's ninety nine dollars. You got one meal, one grease smoothie every day. It's a fifteen dollar value. That's awesome. That's awesome. But the thing is, they have to come bring them for the month. Yeah, and that's the secret. Which is, if you become bring them for the month. You'll get results. Absolutely. You'll get, you'll get some results. You'll get results. We had a yesterday girl today came in from Nigeria, not losing any weight, but she's feeling any better. And she went home like there's a big Nigerian festival. And she got so pissed off at me because she didn't eat anything. <laughs> Just, yeah, I, don't, I did not eat anything. It changes you, doesn't it? It changes it you. It does change you. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. I like the 30-day program. That's I mean, amazing. the only problem is it's it's a lot of work. I oh, mean, yeah. right now I got two, I got like two chefs. What they do is they make a big batch of food for everybody, and uh, I have two young girls working for me. One's twenty five, one's thirty. I work seven days a week. They're yeah. getting burned out. <laughs> <laughs> they amazing, say, I don't see how you do it. day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, day in. That's amazing. But, but I attribute to to my to the way I eat. Yeah, I do. I do a lot of dry fasting. To me, I've done water fast. I've done juice fasting. Dry fast means I stop eating six thirty, seven, maybe five thirty. No food, no water until the next day. Oh, like for you, for you, for example, ready tomorrow. What time is it? You're Ohio. What are you calling from? I'm in Virginia. Virginia. So you stop eating at six thirty, six o'clock. Don't eat until maybe one o'clock, two o'clock next day. You should be at least sixty percent, seven percent better. Well, it's funny you say that, Arnold. Better. I actually, I actually fasted today. I haven't oh, eaten did. anything today, but good. I've been drink, but I've been drinking water. It's not a dry fast. Yeah, um, I'm not so, a big believer. In, I never drink water. You never drink water. Never, ever, ever drink water. Wow. Ever. And, and you, you feel like I you get enough, my great smoothies though. You bet. So you get enough water in your fruit and smooth. Okay. Yeah. That's right. All right. Um, in my opinion now. All right. Can you tell me, um, what's your take on cooked vegan versus raw vegan? Like, especially in terms of, you know, uh, animal-based society that has difficulty transitioning. You think cooked vegan is an acceptable intermediary step? What I tell people in the 30-day program, just add more fruit in your diet. Yeah. That's all I tell them. I said, and I recommend, what I recommend is fruit in the morning, cooked vegan at lunchtime, Dinner, salad, or fruit. Six thirty-seven. You stop eating. The body has a language. You know what that means? You have seventy-five trillion cells in your body. You know, you know what they want? They want love. That's all they want is love. You understand know what I'm I like saying? That. I like they that. want love. So what they it is when you're giving your body the best of food, the body will tell you. Like say for example, you have this cough, right? Yeah. You no, know, no big deal. But it is the body. The day before you get sick, the date, which means yesterday. At 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, all the big leaders in your body got together and said, listen, your body's on overload. What we're going to do is create a crisis to push it out. It generally takes seven days. So if I know, I'm, if I eat too much food, like I cook too much cooked food on my birthday, I had like three, four days in a row, I had a call for seven days. Wow. Seven days. The thing is, that is seven days, I'd stop eating for seven days. I lost like eight pounds. Wow. I dry fasted pretty much, most part, 15, 18, 20, 22 hours a day. So 
So would you say that if you're eating primarily raw food, you're much less likely to get sick than if you're eating cooked food? Well, I don't call it sick. I call it love. <laughs> it's I'm not like really that. sick. The body loves you so much that in order to, to operate at optimum efficiency, it has to get rid of the ex excess waste. Right, right. So when yeah. the thing is you don't get love, that, when we don't get sick, that's the problem. Because yeah. the body has no energy to push it out. As long oh, as you're not getting sick, good. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a great point. The body has enough energy to initiate a detoxification. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, can you tell me, um, you've, you've been doing this a while. What's right. your take on the, on the ethical aspect of this in terms of the animals? Our body wants to be in a state of love. When we we're putting when we're putting a dead animal inside our body, it's in pain. Which means uh, we. In fact, I talked to the. Uh, there's a, it was a the veg fest yesterday, right? Yeah. Philadelphia, a big one, and he said, "Have it all thinking about animal rights, right?" Yeah. And said, not one, not one booth talked about how it affects humans. Yeah. Well, cancer. The number one reason for cancer is is animal products. Every disease is based on animal products. That's right. So why why don't you push it? Why, which means someone's fat, that's animal products. Yep. Someone has diabetes, that's animal products. And they're not pushing it. I told them you're, you're, you're pushing one thing, but the average person who eats hamburgers doesn't want to hear it. You got to get them where it hurts. Yep. yep like I, have to, right. I say my goal is for lands to become the raw food capital of the world. That's my goal. I love it. Every month I take 30 people. I have 15 months, I have three, 400 people. Every person I train, they influence 100 people. That's awesome. That's awesome. They influence, that's, you know what that means? That's huge. Huge. That means what my calculations, Lanzo should be a mostly big city in two years' time. That's incredible. I'm here man. over and over and over and over, 30 people, every single, and what we do is we go to Lanzo Farmers Market every single week, every single week, 3,000 people. I'm how do you me. now? How do you? How are you able to draw these people in? How do you get them interested? I don't word of mouth. Wow, I word of mouth. A lot of word of mouth, and a lot of times they may hear it 10, 15, 20, 30 times. They wow. hear it a lot because the society against it does not rec is just really against this lifestyle. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. That's but what, that's what amazes me. Strong and it, cha it changes. Yeah, that's what that's what I can't understand, Arnold. Is you've known about this for how long, and 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 you've been healing people this whole time. I don't heal anybody. Well, yeah, I don't heal anybody. They heal themselves. Right, right. And I want to make that clear. I am not a healer. Okay, a I got you. I got you. But I right. would say I would say your knowledge facilitates the process. Right. You know, Which and, I, someone come to my store. I got fifteen minutes to change his life. Yeah. 15 minutes, which means I know at least 10, 15 books by heart. I know the pages. Boom, 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 boom. Beautiful. <laughs> they're, beautiful. They're chained. You're not chained, but at least they think about it. All right. Another, another big topic like the animal ethics is the environment. What have you learned about the environmental damage of an animal-based diet? You know, I'll tell you the truth. I don't know that much. But I know, I know if you change your consciousness, everything else changes. Yeah. You cannot. You cannot be concerned about the environment if you're a meat eater. It's just. It's just your map. Your map mind's cloudy. The more conscious you get, the more you're more aware of so many different things. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And to me, I yeah, mean, I'm not I, really environment. It's a good question. Okay. I just do my thing. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I just do my. Uh, I'm a simple ghetto boy who <laughs> is given a, a big job. You know what I mean? Simple Dude, man. I was told this is what I got to do. So I eat, sleep, and drink this business. And I focus on Lansdale. It's awesome. It's awesome, Arnold. I know. I mean, you're, you're a force to be reckoned with. I see you on the internet, and a lot of people are affected by you. It's powerful. Yeah. Well, that's the goal. I want more and more people. That's why I get surrounded with all these beautiful women. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to look like an old geezer like me. Dude, I hear you. <laughs> All right. Um, one thing it might be interesting for the viewer to hear, since you since you um, had to deal with this for so long, you right. were in in your family. You're eating a raw diet, 
and everybody else is eating different diets. How did you cope with that psychologically and and logistically? Did you did you make all your own food? Well, most times I spent a lot of time in the store, so yeah. that really was in fact. Yeah. And now that I left my wife about nine years ago. Yeah. So I was just I would say six years into it. So first five, six, seven, eight, ten years. It's, it's very cloudy. I don't know what that means, but it's cloudy. You're on a journey. It's, it's a, it takes a long time to really get it because you're able to stay, stay, stay in your ground. Because people out there, everyone has an opinion. Everyone's right. And then you listen to everyone and you just don't know who to turn to. Yeah. And I tell people, I tell first thing I tell people is don't believe a word I say. Do not believe one word I say. I'm lying to you. Because until you understand it yourself, you have to be able to stand tall. When you go out to the restaurant, you have to stand tall. When you go to the, when you go to big smorgasbord of ham, turkey, French fries, all potatoes, and people offer that you got to stand tall. You can never no, just just. I mean, I eat cooked food. I have certain cooked foods I eat. I eat potatoes. I eat beans. Rice I won't eat, and I only eat maybe once or twice a week of that. Two three times a week. I want to eat more. Okay. Because I don't want to get a cough. Because if I get a cough, it's there for seven days. Dude, I hear you. I don't know what's going on with this because I've been, you know, cooked vegan for a while now, and I think, I think it's um, the pollen, maybe I don't know, a bunch of different things. But um, I could be cleaner. I could be a lot cleaner. So I know, I know yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but let me ask you. Uh, so when you. Uh, Let's see. Let me let me think now. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to throw a couple of nutrients at you, and I want me to. Yeah. I want you to tell me your the decision you've reached for yourself on them. The yeah. the, the first one is vitamin B12. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Supplement I with two experiences with B12. Once when I was 56 years old, uh, my my I began getting tingles in my fingers. Yeah. And then. Um, I couldn't figure out what, what was wrong with it. Then I asked somebody. He said, "They said you need a um, you need B twelve supplement." Yeah. So at age fifty six years old, what I did is I took a B twelve supplement maybe for about five days. I took a little spirulina. Yeah. And that was it for ten years. <laughs> wow. And you and never this, got the you never got the tingling again. Never got tingling. Well, just recently, I was about three months ago. I got the tingling again. I took it for twice, and that stopped, and then um, never got back. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. All right, how about uh, vitamin D? Vitamin D, I have this urge today to go outside. <laughs> it's very I try to get outside as often as I can. Yeah. Like right now, um, I exercise out there. I started running maybe about a few months ago, so I run outside. I don't worry about anything. You know what I'm saying? Yep. My science fact, what I think is the best for me is dry fasting. Wow. Now, now is that dry fasting corrects all my mistakes? Huh? Is that the same for you in the winter? Like in the winter, you don't worry about the sun. I don't worry about anything. All right. I don't worry about anything. I don't worry about it. All right. Oh, well, that's an energy. I see all these people they worry about things. That's an energy. It's yeah. not about love. It's about their body is consumed. By all, all this worrying about B12, this shortage, that shortage, I don't worry about anything. I have a mission. You understand what I'm saying? I have a mission. I have a passion, which is which, which me is my protector. Yeah. That is the guy. That is my guy in life for me to be as strong as I can. I like it. I have to worry about all these little. This is my opinion now. Yeah. If I had a B12 shortage, I'd take a couple of B12 supplements. I said I took it twice in ten years. In fact, I had to get. I all gave right. the bottle away. I, I hear you, man. I hear you. Now, there's only there's one last one I'll ask you, and I get I get the general point you're making. I'm only yeah. asking you because you've seen so many people and you've been doing this so long. Um, That's right. Uh, iodine, iodine. You know, iodine's funny. You no, know, I'm watching you, right? I'm watching you. I'm watching everything what you're doing, right? Yeah. Everything yeah. that you're doing, <laughs> I'm watching. Right. And a couple times you did this, a couple of times, just a couple uh, of times. You know what that means to me? Iodine. <laughs> This is iodine. Anybody who has a thyroid issue means they're iodine deficiency. All right. All right. So what I do is I always watch people. I watch people when they do this. I watch people when they do this. 
I watched when he did this. I mean, nutrients are not being absorbed. But women are affected by thyroid issue, I would say 10 to 1 to men. Wow. That's very, a very high percentage of women have thyroid issues. Okay. Very high percentage. Not, not, I don't want to hear too many men, but mostly women. And I have at least three three YouTube videos about women who had, who had thyroid issues all went away on a raw food diet with ah. incorporation of iodine and um, uh, dulcet kelp, all the seafood. Sea vegetables, yeah. yeah. Vegetables. All right. I myself, um, I rarely eat it. Once in a while. Okay. Most of my diet is bananas and dates and avocados. Oh, okay. And do you? I don't, do you, right? I don't know whether that's wrong. I mean, <laughs> do you, but I do what I do. Do you eat a lot of avocados? Two a day. Two a day. Two a day. All right. All right. All right. I don't um, know why it makes sense as of today. Tomorrow may not make sense as of today. I, I eat like about ten, fifteen bananas, have... dates, and avocados. Then I mix them with a lot of different fruit. And how about uh, greens? Do you eat much greens, like salads? Um, with my avocado salad, I eat a uh, celery, cucumber. Yep. A green smoothie, I have greens. Okay. Okay. I focus on fruit. Yeah. I don't focus on banana. I don't focus on the greens. Okay. Okay. I mean, and this works for me. Yeah. I mean, everybody has everybody has their truth. You gotta listen to your truth. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm wrong. This is my truth. This way speaks loud and clear. Two avocados a day, bananas in the morning. Last meal of the day is it's uh, like last meal. This today was a smoothie. Okay. I wanted to be a banana whip, but I work all day long. You know that means all day. I get in work at nine thirty ten. I don't stop to six o'clock. That yeah. means what don't stop means I don't sit down and eat. That means for my first meal of the day, I'm standing. My lunch, I'm standing. My dinner, I'm standing. I don't sit down at all. Wow. At all. This that's is day in there, day in there, day in there, day in there, day in there. I'm not saying that's good, not saying that's bad. This right. is what I do. And, and when when you sleep, how much do you sleep? It all depends on how I eat. Say, for example, if I, eat, uh, if I drive fast and eat fruit all day, six, seven hours, if I eat cook, if I eat a cook meal, eight hours. Yeah, okay. Now I'll lose an hour and a half sleep with a cooked meal. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. All right. Which means uh, my last meal, like today, I'm right on schedule. My last meal today was 4.35. That means tomorrow morning, tomorrow, what's tomorrow? Tuesday could be my running day. I'll run maybe a, two, three, four miles, and I'll do some exercise and then go to work. All right. Can you tell for the audience, Arnold, the name of your YouTube channel and the name of your website? Uh, Arnold's way at yahoo.com. All right. Yeah. Everything's based on Arnold's way. My Facebook, right now I got um, about 5,300 subscribers. I want to go up to like 100,000, 200,000. I'm a long way. But I, right. get, I have 1,100 videos. I've dealt with every disease out there. I also deal with athletes. That's so, amazing. All my, which means this year, about a month ago, I was doing 150 push ups, 150 pull ups. 150? 50 push ups, 150 pull ups, and I filmed me. I How film do you, it. Do you do them consecutively at one time? Uh, no, five, ten, twenty, ten, five. Wow. Five push ups, five pull ups, ten push ups. I don't know why I did, but I don't know why I said it because I'm 67. It makes me look good, right? <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, how far is your town from Philly? Uh, 37 minutes. Okay. My <laughs> turn play. So do you get some traffic from Philly? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I get, actually, I get traffic from all over the place. Okay. Like tomorrow, this week I have a girl coming from um, Oregon on her way here. Last two weeks, I got a girl from come Coast Week that never showed up. I have a guy from Michigan right now. Paul, say hi. All right. Say hi. What's up, from man? From Michigan. Hello. Um, can you tell me, uh, can you tell the audience, um, for somebody that maybe wanted to consider starting a cafe like you have, how, tell them, uh, tell them some tips. Is it how difficult? Well, I, is I it? tell you, this is what I do. Ready? I invite them to my house. I charge them eighty dollars a day for room and board. You know what it means? Eighty dollars a day. I give them all. I give them a room. I give them board plus plus ten hours of instructions. Uh huh. Cool. Cool. That means, I, which means, we had a guy in Luzerne County spent three days with me. He's set for life. He he's rocking it. You know what I mean? He's awesome. rocking. Awesome. And it, which means I encourage people. Contact me. I'll, I'll train them for $80 a day, including women board. 
That's awesome, Arnold. I, now, is, is all the food that you serve in your cafe organic? I would say about 85%. Okay. Not 100, 85%. Okay. And but do, things you guys, are, do you guys have somebody that goes like down to the produce? Uh, no. uh, yeah, I have delivery once a week. Okay. But then if I can't get it organic, I, I just go to local local places. All right. But how not many, how many, is organic. How many watermelons do you go through a week? I personally? No, just the, 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 the cafe. No, no. We, we do we do watermelon juice. I don't know, maybe four or five a week. Okay. I personally, I, want it, I like to eat one a day. After really? one a day. Personally. A whole watermelon. Oh, well, juice and stuff like that. I yeah, mean, every yeah. day, we have a we have a young girl. I have a, this young chef. Every day before before we start, I, I have a watermelon. I get a whole bunch of fruit. I have watermelon, grapes, <laughs> whatever you know, fruit, and we have a fruit day. That's cool. Because she cool. doesn't take any, she takes one break now. Before she didn't take any breaks. <laughs> she's just, she's copying your your method, huh? No breaks. Just no breaks the whole time. Oh, uh, no, she sits down now. All right. I told her I, I burned I burn two young girls out. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. Um, all right. So um, are there any, are there, what are some of the difficulties you run into in, in running the cafe? Uh, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It, it's never ending. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I personally don't like to hire people. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a big problem. <laughs> What I do is I, I work with one employee at a time. I don't like two. So I have a figure two, their cafe, they're talking the whole time. So like yeah. one and one. And I would say every single day I get one to three volunteers. Wow. Wow. So every single day someone says, Arnold, can I help you? It's okay. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. But it's a lot. Because like today I had a young girl come in. Not young. I said, I need a bananas peeled. I need burgers made. She said, okay. I need a floor clean. <laughs> she said, okay. That's awesome. That's yeah, I don't like to hire employees. Yeah. I um, mean, just too much paperwork. Just yeah. too much. Yeah. I mean, I have a simple operation. It's a lot of work, though. Yeah. You, you kind of referred to this earlier, and maybe you could just say one or two more things about it. It sounds like, um, essentially, your approach to everything is love. And would you say that's that, right. would you say that because of that, you get these people coming in to volunteer? You get, Absolutely. like you said, you're giving away food and, and you're getting money I give back. free hug. I, I give at least 10, we, I give, obviously, of the 35, 50, 40, 50 customers we have a day, obviously, I'll hug at least 15 of them every single day. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And that's what they're looking for now. <laughs> yeah. They're desperate, right? They're, they're des desperate. Yeah. Desperate, yeah. Because every disease is based on love. You know what I mean? We had, we had, I just finished a movie called Breast Cancer Awakening. Yeah. I did a documentary. I took 30 women, fed them every single day for free, for 30 days. Wow. And we filmed results. And breast it's cancer, called, it's called Breast Cancer Awakening? Awakening, right. And I told them breast cancer is the best thing for them. The By far the best thing for them ever. You ought to be thankful that you have it. Because the basic, well, assumption well. The body, basic assumption of the body makes mistakes. That's a basic assumption. It's, a, it's an extraneous material, isn't there? No, 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 no. Body is based on love. If you're eating food that the body does not want, what it does is it has, 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 to do, has to do something with it. Three choices, either destroy it, encapsulate it, or get rid of it. And, and breast cancer, where it does, takes all this acid waste, encapsulate it, so it doesn't get in your bloodstream. And then it puts it there, and just every all the time you eat something bad, it just goes to it. Remove the cause, get the body healthy, healthy condition, the body go to that tumor and dissolve it. No money. Yeah. No money. Yeah. That's incredible. That's incredible. And, you know, you've probably heard, you remember uh, Dr. Herbert Shelton. I mean, I he was, he was writing about this, you know, years 70, ago. 80 years ago. Right. Thing is, people don't want to hear it. Yeah. Don't want to hear it. Because with the basic assumption is food is meant to entertain, not fuel. People want to be entertained. That's just the way it is. They want to be entertained. They go to a restaurant, they want to be entertained. Like, I don't do recipes. My recipe is a banana. That's my recipes. Actually, I wrote a children's book, too, called uh, Childhood, Recipe for Ch Childhood Recipes for, for Everyone. Cool, based, cool. That's based cool. on love. We'll put, yeah, we'll put that down the bottom. Yeah. And, and, I wrote um, a lot of books. Yeah. It sounds no, like I, it sounds, I buy a lot of books. Sounds like you're pretty prolific. 
Um, but uh, very exciting. You know why I have to? No, no choice in the matter. Which means once you give it a passion, once you give me energy, it, nothing else matters. You just focus on what do you have to do in order to make it happen. My goal right now is no autism. That's my goal. You know, Arnold, what do you see, uh, say, 10, 15 years down the line, if this, if this way of living becomes more widely accepted? What do you think the consequence of that will be on a, on a really broad scale? A really broad scale? It'll be more uh, socially, uh, nothing to complain about. <laughs> <laughs> everything will be everything should be based on a win-win scenario. Yeah. Maybe quiet neighborhoods, environment very be play, place a higher high priority. Uh probably less trash because everybody be eating fruit and more composting. Yeah. I mean a lot a lot more trees, big yeah. time trees. People will be having their own gardens and if they don't have gardens, they'll be so there'll be community gardens. I mean yeah. go, an an acre an acre an acre an acre of land with fruit trees, two to ten tons. Wow. One acre is two to ten tons, which means garden vegetables will be replaced by fruit veg, fruit tree vegetables, fruit fruit trees. Yep, now, I yep. most fruit. I rarely eat vegetables. Rarely eat vegetables. So for yep. somebody say a big garden vegetable, says, what can I eat? <laughs> so just yeah, like like you said in your smoothie, or yeah, and a cucumber. A cucumber is a fruit. It so is a cucumber. Fruit. <laughs> yeah. 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 No calories though. Yeah, right. Exactly. You gotta have your calories. Bananas, dates, and avocados are my major source of calories. Yeah. Have you, have you, uh, in your experience, have you met people who tried to do this lifestyle and they did not eat enough calories and they ran into all problems? Time. We have a lady called uh, Betty. She's on my YouTube. 82 years old. She's getting busy all the time. Yeah. She kept saying, "What should I do?" Well, I said, "You're not eating enough." Yeah. Then another lady uh, called Jean. Same thing. Wasn't eating enough, and she wasn't losing any weight. I mean, you gotta eat. You gotta eat. If you're not yeah. dry fasting, you gotta eat. I dry fast, which means my calorie content is not as much. My 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 system's a little more used to not a little lower calorie content. Yeah, yeah. Right now, like taping this? No. Oh, can I turn? Yeah, he's taping. It. He's taping it. Oh, I was wondering if I could turn the. Uh... I have a question. How long are you gonna be? How long? How long? I don't oh know. yeah, we're we're just about to wrap it up. I I was yeah. just gonna. I got all my male um, roommates here. Mike, Mike's my 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 documentary guy. Want to say hi? Hi. Yeah. What's up, Mike? Hey, can you see me? Uh, okay. Not yet. Come on in the. Come on in the. Well, the we're camera. coming up with uh, Breast Cancer Awakening. It's it's the next film out. All right. Bend bend your legs uh, so I can see your face. Okay. There we go. A little lower. A little lower. Okay. That's hey, it. Documentaries. Oh, okay. And my all books. Right. And so yeah. so the right. yeah, breast. So you guys are you guys are writing books. You're doing videos. You're you're doing it all. That's right. Well, we're not doing it all, but we're writing books and making videos. All right, all right. I'm doing it all. <laughs> it <is> all. <laughs> all right. No choice in the matter. I have no computer skills. I have no movie skills. To, and I said, I need some. And he just pops in. <laughs> well, it's amazing. It's amazing how it's just kind of coalescing. I need someone to do a documentary on autism. Anybody volunteers out there? All right. I need someone to me four months, five months. All right. Volunteers up to Arnold's way. All right, man. It's film oriented. Autism. We have a kid. I have a kid who, who's totally wiped out. Totally wiped out. No, he just like autistic incorporated. It means he can't talk, can't communicate. Uh, he has seizures. I'm saying within two, three months, a lot, most of it should stop. Yep, I need someone yep. to film it. Have you, had any, have you had any MS patients, Arnold? Yes. Yeah. Uh, at least one, two, three. And were they successful? The first one it was Matt Goodman. He was so it was he had symptoms that completely went away. Second one was uh, Chloe. She's an older. She's like 62, 63. Uh, she still struggles with it. Actually, yeah. another Tamika. It went away. Urson, because she's younger, 32, 33, completely went away. Wow. Amazing. Completely went away because what is MS is generally too much. Um, let's see, protein, page 26, protein. fourth paragraph. <laughs> too much carbohydrates. The body doesn't oh. like too much grain products. Oh, and that's, sugar products. That's interesting. I would have thought it was too much protein. No, too much. Epilepsy is too much protein. MS, fibromyalgia, lupus, too much grain products. Oh. See, page 1006, what that does is. Uh, um, not deadens, but makes this 
hard for the body to absorb the nutrients. Okay. Okay. It coats it. Like yeah. anybody who has arthritis, meter, or grains. Fibromyalgia, lupus, for the most part, you get off grains, that should go away. Okay. Okay. Uh, in, a film, in a film, in the 30 day uh, breast cancer waking, we had a lady with fibromyalgia, second week completely went away. Wow. Wow. Completely went away. Well, Arnold, I want to I want to thank you for taking the time. Yes. <laughs> I'm inspired Sorry. by what you're oh. doing. Uh, yeah. And and uh, we look forward to everything that's coming with, to you in the future. And yeah, <laughs> hopefully you'll get that the two hundred thousand you want. And good luck. Well, the goal, it's not a question of what I want. It's a question of diseases can should not should not even occur. This way, it gives people a better option. You change lands, that you change the world. Lands exactly. is the wealth capital of the world, which means every person lands will affect. Thousands of people. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time, sir. Hey, thank you. Take care. Good luck. Good luck. I'll see you. Bye. Where do you live in Virginia? Yep. Where do you live in Virginia? Um, I'm in uh, I'm in, I'm kinda near Charlottesville, about a, about forty five minutes from Charlottesville. Oh. Central Central Virginia, kind of uh in the mountains in the, the Blue Ridge. Oh, Blue Ridge Mountains. Yeah, we have a uh, girl coming to Virginia soon. Suffolk, Suffolk, Virginia. Okay, okay. She's stationed there. Ah, okay, right, right. Well, okay. Someday I hope to get up to to uh, your town and see see your. Well, you guys, I have a free room. I'll give you a free room more. I have a free couch space. <laughs> All okay. Right. Thanks, hey, take Lord. care. Take it easy. Okay. Man. Bye. Bye. I'm not to turn it off. Okay.